Hello and welcome to the fifth in a series of videos accompanying the Joomla tutorial Developing an MVC Component. This step we're going to be adding a variable request in the menu type and the first question is what does that actually mean? So at the moment within our administrator functionality we can add a new menu item and point it at and point it at our hello world component by selecting hello world here and we've already done that in the past and we've got this is our site the front end of the site and we've got our hw menu item and if we click that that points to our hello world component which just at the moment um, put site hello world. Now in this step what we want to do is we want to introduce another option, a goodbye world component, so that whenever the administrator goes and adds a new menu item they can select whether they want the hello world message or the goodbye world message to be presented on that menu item and then whenever the user clicks that menu item they will see hello world or goodbye world, depending on what the administrator has set. So let's start developing the code. Now, if you were uh, following a previous video when we set up the menu item initially, you will perhaps remember that the menu items are controlled by these files down in the site views, hello world tmpl directory default.xml and we looked a bit at um, some other examples of these XML files and how they controlled what menu items appeared in this, what, what options appeared in this um, functionality within the admin section for adding a new menu item. So hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that this is the code that we're going to have to change. Now this is all in yellow so that's not going to work within Firefox so I'll have to use Chrome to copy and paste that into my XML file. Now I have to make sure I get it in the right place. So it's after the layout and before the metadata. So we'll stick it in there. Okay, we'll save that. So this will allow the um, administrator to set up a new menu item and select which message gets uh, displayed or associated with that menu item. Of course, Within the site, we have to also um, actually pick out the correct menu item. So that's where this second change comes. Whenever our view asks and says, give me some data, that view request will go to the model and it's up to the model to return the right data. So it's going to return hello world or goodbye world to the view depending on what um, the administrator has set. So let's put that into our code. This is our model code. So it's this file here. And this is the bit here I think that we have to replace. I think I might have. I think it's just the bit in brackets that I want to replace. Just check that. Yeah, it's just the bit in brackets. So hopefully that should be correct. Um, the final thing that we have to do is change our manifest file to version 5. Let's go ahead and do that. Manifest file. This is it here. And we'll change that to version 5. And save that. Now everything should hopefully be saved. And we'll go along to our code and zip that up. Hit version 5. 
We'll go back to our admin functionality, cancel that. And extensions, manage, install. So we want to install our latest version. Uh, browse for no. And here it is here. Success. That's always nice to see. So let's see if it's actually done anything. Oh, we've still got our Hello World component there. Shouldn't change. On our menus, we want to add a new menu item. So let's call it GW. We'll select our Hello World. Now, when we see this, um, we see this new uh, field that's been included. This is a greeting label. And you put your, or over it, you get some tooltip, which is the description. And we can select whatever message we want to appear. So we're going to choose Goodbye World and set that to a menu item, GW. Save and close that. Now let's go back and press our home key. And sure enough, GW is now there. And when we click GW, goodbye world. So that is successfully working. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at what we've done here. Now, if you look at the code of our XML file, this is the new thing that we've incorporated. And you're probably aware that whenever you enter data onto a web page, you're usually entering it into an HTML form. And Joomla has the ability, the functionality to build those HTML forms for you with all of their fields in it, um, provided that you define uh, for Joomla what each field has to be. And that is really what is um, in this XML file. It's a series of field definitions from which Joomla will build up an XML, or sorry, uh, an HTML form. Because really when you're going into your menu items and adding that, that's really um, a part of a form that is building from this XML file, um, which is in this directory here. And if you go and uh, search for something like Joomla standard form field types, you'll come across this page here, which is really all the different types of field definitions that you can put into those XML files um, to, um, to really tell Joomla that you want that sort of field um, displayed on your form. So, for example, you've got calendar, you've got checkbox color, you can select category. And if we look at our code, the one that we have put in is a type equals list. So if we go down here, we can see list. And this provides a drop down list or a list box of custom defined entries. And you can read all the parameters there. And um, that is what we have put in here. So the label and the description, um, and then the, the various values which are allowed. If we look at our table in the database, remember that um, when we looked at it before, the menu items were stored in a table in the database called menu. And we'll just refresh that. And we see this is the GW menu item that we've just included. So if you look here, are the other ones here, this this hello world refers to the one that we get here. But the other ones, the other um, menu items under main menu are the ones that we see here. So if we look at what has been put in the database, um, we can see that we've got option equals com hello world view equals hello world and ID equals two. 
And if we compare that to what we had previously on our HW, well, it's pretty similar, but there's no ID. So what uh, Joomla has put in here is an ID equals two. And that really comes from our defining in the form this sort of stuff here, request. So this request here, um, as it actually says in the in the tutorial here, the request group of fields indicates mandatory fields, and it means that this goes into the um, URL. So we look before whenever someone clicks this URL, uh, Joomla makes it appear as if um, it's the user has actually clicked this URL and option it sets up these option view and ID variables. So whenever we go to our code and we look in the model, we can do a get on the ID and we can get the ID that Joomla has set up, which is associated with this um, menu item. And that enables um, our model code to get the ID that has been associated with that menu item. And in case it's two, it'll put out goodbye world and case of one, hello world. Now, well, that's basically how it works. But just before we finish, let me uh, go over a couple of the wee things. We already have a hello world menu item that we set up in previously. So it doesn't have a, an ID on it. So let's just try and see what happens when we click it. It doesn't crash. Well, it's kind of reassuring to know that it doesn't crash. But let's try and find out why it doesn't crash. And if we look at our code where we're actually looking at the ID, um, this is the line that has saved us here. If you search on Joomla get, you'll get this page here, which tells you what we're doing here. We've done a, a set J input into this here. And we can get a value from J input by this here. So we have um, we've put in that first line there. Got the input, which really relates to the HTTP request parameters. And uh, we're getting the ID. But notice here, we've actually provided a default value. So the default value that we have provided is one. And that is why um, it'll come down and put out hello world. So it's something to, to bear in mind if you are developing um, developing components and making them available to others and you make this sort of change, you have to consider, well, what happens if people have already got things set up based on my own uh, previous version? You have to consider, well, how will that work with my new code? So that's one thing. And the other thing is, it talks down here about, you can test this by putting this URL in so let's just try that it's one hello world i will change that to two uh, we should get goodbye world well let's change it to three and see what we get get hello world and the other thing that has saved us is this here the default value, because although the administrator can only set up um, the two options, one and two, there's nothing to stop some playful user going along and setting a, a special URL of their own. And what we don't want to happen is that our program crashes because of that. So that's another thing to bear in mind, the default, because um, some playful users can go and, and try and muck up our, our nice website like that. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for listening. Bye.